Hello, ROS developers. The 2021 is about to finish. Another year in pandemic mode. Well, I thought that the last week of the year would be a very good moment to review how has it been the year for our favorite robotics framework. In this video, we are going to evaluate the year for ROS in terms of hits. I mean, how much progress has made ROS along the year? Is ROS in a better position now than at the beginning of the year? Let's have a look. We started the year in February when NASA announced that ROS2 will be used in the Viper mission to the moon. An open robotics posted a job position to work in that project together with NASA. What an awesome start of the year. And then later at the Roswell, they did a presentation uh, delivered by one of the representatives of NASA about this Viper mission. You can check this presentation on the links below this video. But then in March, Blue Origin posted another job announcement on the ROS Discourse Forum looking for engineers with ROS2 knowledge for the development of a space ROS. Space ROS, what is that? We had no idea that that was on the table. That's awesome. And later in July, they established a collaboration with NASA to create this system together. Then in April, I interviewed Sarah Gibson about the release of Unity for ROS. Unity launched the Unity ROS set of packages to make work ROS with Unity simulations. The packages included ROS TCP endpoint, ROS TCP connector, and a perception SDK aimed to the generation of training data for visual robotic systems. Packages for ROS2 were also released a couple of months later. Then, in May, Universal Robot, in collaboration with Picnic, launched their ROS2 drivers for their UR robotic arms. That is a big step towards ROS2 usage because, as far as I know, the UR robots are the only industrial robots that you can buy right now with support for ROS2. Awesome. Then, Usernet announces that it goes open source during the ROS Developers Day conference in June. Usernet is a peer-to-peer -peer secure VPN network for robots over the internet, which especially works well with ROS. Check out their presentation at the ROS Dev Day conference links below. In July, Fetch was sold to Zebra Technologies for 290 million. Fetch is one of the flagships of the ROS community. Fetch Robotics was started by ROS pioneer Melanie Wise in 2014, and it was leading the market of ROS AMRs, especially for warehouses. Being sold for such an amount indicates the good health of AMRs based on ROS. At the same time, SoftBank Europe laid off 40% of its workforce. It is worth to notice that SoftBank robots do not run with ROS. I'm just saying. In August, Tesla announced that they will create a humanoid robot called the Tesla Bot. Even if I tried to get in contact with Elon Musk, I was not able to get an interview. So what I'm explaining here are just my guesses. I think that the robot is not going to be based on ROS. Instead, they will try to use their already in place operating system for their cars in an attempt to create their own ecosystem like Apple, using the same OS for all the devices, cars, phones, robots, etc., microwaves they want to build. So far, they have posted some job openings for the project, and none of them required knowledge of ROS. Well, another interesting news for the ROS world made in August was the announcement of Intel to discontinue the development and selling of the RealSense sensor. That is one of the main sensors used by the robotics community to perceive the world. And it's a pity and a problem for roboticists which relied on that sensor for their robots. 
If that is your case, you can find a discussion about alternatives to the real sense in the Ross Discourse Forum. I will put a link below also. So the final event of the DARPA Subterranean Challenge was held in September and Team Cerberus won the two millions of the system competitions. Team Dynamo, the one-man team of my friend Ilario Tomé, won the $750,000 in the competition. Both of them used ROS1 to, to control the robots. Also, the competition was running Ignition, the robot simulator developed by Open Robotics. In October, the Indy Autonomous Challenge was done. The competition is about controlling autonomous cars racing at more than 300 kilometers per hour using ROS2 and AutoWare software. There is a very interesting talk at the ROS World of this year about it. Also in October, the three community representatives for the ROS2 Technical Steering Committee were elected. My friend Olivier Michel, creator of the Webot Robot Simulator, who I interviewed about this Webot Simulator in another podcast, Brett Aldrich, who also delivered a presentation about SMAC on ROS2 at the ROS World this year, and Patrick Moussal, who I will be interviewing on the second week of January. On December, Apex AI, the company behind the first certified ROS2 based operating system for autonomous cars, announced that they have raised 56 million. Along the year, Apex has also released the version 1.3 of their Apex.OS. This is a very good news because it is indicating that a base system for autonomous cars based on, in ROS has interest. However, the main leaders in the world of autonomous cars, which have launched their robot access this year, none of them uses ROS. First, in China, the Chinese robot taxi one is based on Apollo, the framework for autonomous cars developed by Baidu. In the USA, Waymo launched a robot access service in San Francisco and Cruise also received permission to start the service in San Francisco. None of them are using ROS. About ROS releases this year, uh, we have received the following releases. First, uh, Kinetic reached the end of life at the April this year. ROS2 Galactic was launched in May. Ignition Edifice was launched in March. And MicroRoss released the version 3.05, with uh, includes, which includes ROS2 actions. As for conferences, we started the year with the promise of finally having a ROSCon at New Orleans, but unfortunately, that was not possible due to the pandemic. Then the conference was translated again, translate. Yeah, translated again, online, converted in the second edition of Ross Wall. That was successfully conducted in October. We also had the RossCon France, which also was held online, and RossCon Japan, which was held on site, even if some of the speakers had to deliver their speech online because they couldn't enter the country. Apart from the official conferences, this year we also had the Movie Day on March and the Ross Developers Day in June. As a conclusion to this video, based on this list of news about Ross, I consider 2021 a successful year for Ross. All the indicators are up, showing that Ross has a big future. And even more, I would declare 2021 the year of Ross 2. In this year is when we have seen ROS2 being applied to professional projects, to edge research challenges, to start to be taught at universities, and even being accepted by space agencies. That is why I declare 2021 the year of switching to ROS2. It feels to me that the ROS community finally sees ROS2 mature enough for the project. From that point, ROS2 is going to get the relevance it deserves in the ROS world. So it is time that you switch. If you have not done it yet, 
And in case that you haven't done that, challenge, that change yet, then you are late. If you don't want to lose the trend and want to train your team to switch to ROS2, consider taking our three days intensive online workshop for teams that will teach your team about everything they need to switch to ROS2 in three days. We use cloud simulations and remote connection to our real robots. It is 100% practice based. And that's all. You can find a link to all the points I have mentioned on the video description. And I hope I have not missed uh, some other important news for the Ross World happening during the 2021. If in that case that you think that I did, then please put them in the comments with links to the news. See you next year. And remember that the robots of the future depend on you. Get ROS2 Industrial Ready is an intensive workshop designed to help ROS developers transition to ROS2. From the ROS2 basics to ROS2 more advanced topics like hybrid applications between ROS1 and ROS2, mapping, localization, path planning with navigation 2, and ROS2 motion planning and grasping with movie 2. All this is covered in the Get Ross 2 Industrial Ready workshop. Using the technology that we've developed throughout the years for our, our remote real robot labs, online attendees can also connect to these robots remotely from their location and practice whatever they want. is only in the Get Ross 2 Industrial Ready Workshop.